In this video, we're going to take a look at publishing a course. So to publish a course, you'll click on the Publish button. And from here, you're going to see a couple of things that will allow you to do a quality check on your course. You see this green check mark here. This indicates that the quality checker and the link checker has checked my course and I have passed. So if I open this up, I can see what it checked. You'll notice that there's a link here and it goes through each object and checks the content to make sure things are working properly. So we can see there's our discussion. You can see there's our link to the attachment. It passed. And so the more complex the course, the more this becomes valuable. Since our course, again, is just a test course, it doesn't have a lot of content in it. It's not as valuable to use this feature, but you'll find that it's very helpful. You can also email that report to someone, and you can also view it as a PDF. So if that's part of your business process to say, yes, I checked my course and it passed all of the quality checks, you can do that. So that's something that you may find very helpful to you. Or if you find something that isn't working properly, you can click Edit Course and go back and fix it. In our case, we're going to move forward. So I'm going to click Publish Course. And now it's going to allow me to enter the edition number. And again, this is one of those things that's really business process oriented. Hopefully you've talked to your colleagues you've spoken with leadership, and you have a process to use for this. You should code them consistently so that the, the naming of this is meaningful. If you don't code it that it's meaningful, you're going to go back and look at it and say, what does that number mean? <laughs> it may not mean anything to you. Um, one of the ways that I have used it is that I will give it the name and the number uh, based on um, what trimester I'm working in. So for me, that would be fall. So what I would do in this, if I were, were you know, doing a real course, I would say F for fall. The year is 2014. Then I would put a dot in between, and then I would say what version this is. And since we're in a draft version, I'm going to do 0 0.0.1. Having those three numbers there, is a very uh, software oriented way to do it. Typically it means, you know, major version, um, you know, kind of a, a medium revision and then a minor revision. Again, this is completely up to you and your organization how you do this. But for instance, what I would do is when I got to the regular, regular version, I was completely done and it's the first time it's going to run as a course, I would probably do 1.0.0 because that's the first run of that course. That's the first edition. So that addition number is important, and it is something that will help you keep track of how much you've worked on it. Once I've added that in, I can click Confirm. But before I do that, you have this other option here. You see this check mark, Allow Students to Download Course Materials. You have a choice. You don't have to allow them to do that. If you uncheck it, they will not receive those materials, and they won't be able to download anything. But if you allow them to, it will take all of your course materials and put them in a PDF, and allow students to download it. So I'm going to click Confirm. It will run, and then it will say it's been successfully done as that current edition. So let's look at, so what does an edition mean? Let's go look at that and see what it is. So I'm going to close this, click Edit Course to go back, and now I want to look at my history. So my history is telling me what I'm working on, or it's telling me what's running right now. So I know what my formats are, and I now have this edition. So I have edition F14 0.0.1 and then I also have what's called the working copy. So what happens is every single time you publish and you give it a new edition number you have this, you basically have a version that kind of becomes, it sort of runs by itself, becomes its own entity. And then every time you open the course after that point, you're always working on what's called the working copy. And so the working copy is where you're going to put your changes. So let's say while this is running, you say, you know, next time I use this, I'm going to do it differently. So you're always, every time you open the course, you're always going to be working on that working copy. So that's the point where your addition and your working copy diverge. So they're not the same at this point forever. They're not ever going to be the same unless you make changes to both, which we'll cover in an advanced course. So, but at this point, just think of it this way. As you work on the course, you're always in the working copy. Once you publish, you create this kind of standalone 
published copy that's then used to create your course sections. And so it's a little bit different. It's kind of like a, it's more insulated. It's separate and it's separated from the work. So at this point, what that means that as I make changes here, I'm not going to affect that published copy. I am not going to make changes to it. So students are not going to see things that I do. Um, and that's so that they get a, that static copy stays static for them while they're, while they're taking the course. Then the next time you publish a new version and you'll have a second version. So let's walk through that then. Let's say it's two months down the road. I've made lots and lots of changes. Here, I'll drag a few things in here so you can see that. I've made changes. I've matured my process a little bit. I've updated the course. Maybe the textbook is different, whatever those things are. I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to publish a brand new version. So I'm going to click Publish. And then I'm going to click Publish again. And I get that same choice. So let's say this is the end of fall. No, let's say it's winter. That'll make it much easier to see. So I'm going to say W15 dot. Let's say this is version number one. 1.0.0. Confirm. And now I have my new version. So I'm going to close this, edit course, go back to my history, and now, actually I, gotta, I have, forgot I have to re refresh. Sometimes you have to refresh. And now I have both of them. I've got my F14 version and my 1.0.0 version. So if you can imagine if you made changes every trimester or every semester or every quarter, you'd be able to see that history. If I click back and load that older one, it'll be different because it's a different edition. If I load winter, that has that those additions in it additions of objects. And if I go to my working copy, I've not made any fundamental changes between winter 15 and the working, so you won't see a difference. But there's a fundamental difference between 14 and 15. So hopefully that makes some sense on publishing. Um, as you'll notice too, is since I have the, the winter one, it says I can't create new things because I'm, I'm in a kind of that lockdown version. So that's why that works that way. But that gets so that, so that way you're not affecting what students are doing in their current course. So you've now seen how to publish and how to view the editions and maybe hopefully start to think about how you're going to code or name your edition so that's something that you can manage going forward.